So looking at how we can like use this idea of this general term of the uh, binomial expansion to answer questions. Now, and as we talked about in class, that the idea that we don't really want to have to expand it out all the time to find every term. And we just want to be able to pick out a term, say the sixth term in the, an expansion of 3x minus 2y minus to the power of 9. So in this case, what we're looking at is that the sixth term though, and, and keep in mind, the first term would be uh, 6c1, 6c0. That'd be the first term. Uh, and then you, the second term would be the 6c1, and so on. The last term would be 6c6. So when I'm looking at the sixth term, I'm actually looking at one where it's 9c5. That would be the sixth term in the series. Okay, so when we're looking at that situation, we want to say, okay, what would be the values that we're going to put in for m minus r and r? So if it's 9 minus 5, the 3x would be the power of 4. So that would give us the the value there. And we've got the minus 2y to the power of 5. Now, technically you could write them in another order and, and have the sixth term in another way, but... It, but well, I'm quite happy to see it this way. Now, what does that look like? Yeah, NC5, 3 to the power of 4, minus 2 to the power of 5. That's all, they're all going to be numbers. They're just going to be numbers. And we're going to have an X to the power of 4 and a Y to the power of 5. So, what are we going to see? We'll put that into the calculator. 9C5, 3 to the power of 4, minus 2 to the power of 5. As you can appreciate, it's going to be a rather large number. Minus 326,592. And the x to the power of 4, y to the power of 5. And that's the sixth term. So, using those ideas, what can we say about the values of nc0 and ncn? Well, they're the two n ones of our Pascal's triangle. nc0 is at one end, ncn of the other one. They're both equal to 1. What we will do at some stage as well, and another property that we we got to know is that the sum of all the coefficients will be 2 to the power of n. Well, if you want to go find that and prove that, but we'll probably do as an exercise at some stage in class, but keep that in mind. So we know that factorial is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3, 3 down to 1. So way we get this in, in the formula for it is this one here, n factorial over n minus k factorial times k factorial. So that's the actual definition of NCK. So that's where the calculation, so instead of doing that calculation every time and putting the actual values of N and K in, you can use the calculator's program to do that for us. But that's where the, the that's where it comes from. We can also use uh, NK with the brackets there. So that, that's where you'll see that as well. Um, so let's have a look at some, some calculations with it. So 4 factorial, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is 24. 9 factorial, 9, 8, 7, true to 1. And we've, we've done some of those before. 5C4, well, again, you can do it two different ways. 5 factorial divided by 1 factorial times 4 factorial. So the 4 factorials cancel and leave you 5. 6C1, so 6 factorial over 6 minus 1 factorial, which is 5 factorial times 1 factorial, gives us 6. Now, it leads us to an interesting one. Why is 6C6? We know it's equal to 1 because that's the uh, end point of our um, Pascal's triangle. But by definition, we'd say that's 6 factorial over 6 minus 6 factorial, which is 0 factorial, times 6 factorials, and the 6 factorials cancelled, leads us to 1 over 0 factorial. If that's going to be equal to 1, then 0 factorial is, by definition, equal to 1. So just keep that in mind. Okay, that 0 factorial, if you see that, by definition, must be equal to 1 because you get that situation, 1 over 0 factorial. We know we can't divide by 0, but we also know that 6c6, which gives us rise, gives rise to this statement, is equal to 1. So that's where we're able to use it. So using the idea to find the third term of an expansion. So the third term of a plus b to the power of 15 would be 15c2. So remember, the third would be 15c2. So a to the power of 13, b to the power of 2, and 15c2 from our calculators, 105, a to, a to the power of 13, b squared. x minus y to the power of 6, the third term, 6c2. 
which and we'd have an x to the power of 4 minus y all squared 6c2 is 15 and 7 and for this expansion of this one 7c2 x to the power of 5 would be 7 minus power of 7 minus 2 which is 5 and the 2 y to the power of 2 and then you can collect your terms so 7c2 times 1 fifth the power of 5 times 2 squared would give us 84 on 3125 so throw that in the calculator you'll get that exp that expression or that number so finding the constant term if it's going to be a constant term with these ones well it's going to be the for the first term here so 8c0 for the power of 8 and we x to the power of 0 and we get that number so if it's going to be for this one, it's going to be the last term. So we go 3C3. There's going to be four terms. That'll be the fourth one. And we're just going to have the X to the power of 1, 6 to the power of 3. So and that gives us 216. Because that's going to be 1, so it's just the 6. So in this situation, this one's... Considering this one as an A and a B situation there, it would give us a 9C3, A to the power of 6, B to the power of 3. So why is it going to be in that case? Because it's going to be a constant term, we need an x to the power of 6 there and an x to the power of 6 on the bottom to cancel. So notice we get an x to the power of 6 there and it's going to cancel. So we get an 84 from 9c3. 3 to the power of 6 is 729 and 2 cubed is 8. And there's our constant term. So you've got to have a look and, and, and keep that in mind. We'll show you a more formal way to probably do that later on. And for this one, and here's, well, here's, if you want to do it more formal way, instead of just my inspection of the last one, what we want to do is have a situation here where 10CR is going to give us y to the power of 2, 10 minus r, and the 1 over y cubed to the power of r. And that's going to give us some number in front with a y to the power of 0. So what we want to do is just play around with the, the y parts. Ignore all the coefficients in front because that's not going to make any difference at the moment so y power of 2 to the power of 10 minus r will give us y to the power of 20 minus 2r and we'll get a y cubed to the power of r well 1 over y cubed which is a minus 3 root 3r y to the power of 3r minus 3r so what we need to do is collect our like terms and that's going to be equal to y to the power of 0 what values do we need to get in here and here, them do the multiplication and the like, and to make sure when we do the multiplication there, it gives us a zero in the in the uh, index. We get a twenty minus five r is equal to zero, so five r is equal to twenty, or r is equal to four. So when we get ten c four, y to the power of two, ten minus four, so it gives us a y to the power of twelve, and that will give us a, a dividing by y to the power of twelve as well. So that's where we're going to get a constant term because we the y's will cancel out when r is equal to 4. So we get our 10c4, as we said, y squared, that's y to the power of 12. And that's going to be four, minus 1 to the power of 4. So it's really just going to be 10c4 is going to give us our answer there in that one. So there's a formal way to do a question like that. So we can make sure we get it, uh, get the correct value. It's probably easier that way. So find the coefficient of x in this one. Well, again, Doing this in form way, we have a 7CR, or that can be any pronoun you like there. The X is going to be the 7 minus R, minus 3 uh, power of X, uh, over X to the power of R. We're going to get, again, some number, X to the power of 1. Ignore the numbers we're going to get, just concentrate on the X's. So an X to the power of 7 minus R, and the X to the power of minus R, is going to give us something that's going to give us X to the power of 1. So the 7 minus r, 2r going to give us equal to 1, because we collect our terms there. 2r is equal to 6, or r is equal to 3. So that would give us, that's the case, we get a 7c3, x to the power of 4, and times minus 3 over x to the power of 3. And that's going to give us a minus 945x, or our coefficient being 945 in that situation. What does it mean to be independent of y in an expansion? Basically, it means just we have a constant term. It's just another way to say our constant term there. So again, we're going to set up our general term 
and set it equal to some number times y to the power of zero. Ignore all the numbers except and just concentrate on the pro numerals. So we get a y to the power of 12 minus r and a th y, 1 over y cubed would give us a minus 3 when it, r when it's, when it's times by the power outside the bracket. So again, collect our like terms, 12 minus r minus 3r gives us 12 minus 4r. And we, again, we just concentrate on the powers equal to 0. r would be equal to 3. So if that's the case and we sub it in, we know the y's are going to cancel. That's y to the power of 9. y cubed, power of 9 on the bottom. y power of 9 cancels. 12c3 times 2 to the power of 9 times 1 to the power of 3 gives us 112. 1640. So you've got to go through and make sure you can find an equation that allows us to find that value that gives us the term in the expansion that we've got that will give us a constant term or to a power of x or any term in that series what we have.